mass psychosis. Everyone you follow, everyone you look up to, every influencer, every celebrity, they're going to come out, they're going to say Kamala, 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 Kamala. Kamala was selected, not elected. Do we even know what Kamala stands for? No. Is she black? Is she Indian? What is she? She's just a chameleon. Oh, actually, she's probably a reptilian. Hmm. During 2020, we found out that mass psychosis by the mainstream media works. This year, it will be mass psychosis continued confirmation bias. That's their plan. They're deleting all the negative history about her. Yes. Which is wild. Wild. Never happened. Well, it never happened. Never, never happened. happened, bro. She's not the borders off. She's not the borders off. She's not she, the borders She never off. was. Tim Walls. Chosen. He got his DUI going 98 and his 35. During the summer of love, Black Lives Matter, his city incurred some of the highest amounts of buildings being burnt down in his Minneapolis. He has now imported hundreds of thousands of Somalians. When is the meteor going to come? Are you ready? Yeah. Let's go. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever in the world you are. Welcome to the Matt Kim Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Kim, joined by my co-host, Mr. Peter Setting. What's up, what's up, guys? Smash the like button, join the Discord. It's the Matt Kim Podcast. Happy, what day is it today? Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, everybody. No, it's Wednesday. August. No, it's Tuesday. Well, it's to do Tuesday today. This episode will be live on Thursday. So happy Thursday, everybody. Happy Thursday, everybody. It is the beginning of August. Amazing. Amazing. The time has flown. We've already done the time has flown last week, but it is flying even faster. Even faster. Today, I want to talk about the president, presidential nominees mm. and the vice presidential nominees and the tickets and what's going up against. But before we do that, I need to tell you, mm. speaking of time moving so fast, yeah. I dropped my daughter off for her first day of school on Monday. Bro. 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 I do not. Oh. I do. <laughs> the 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 most the most apparent barometer and measuring rod of life are children. Mm. Because when you hit these milestones, you realize how fast time has flown. And I can't believe so I remember as clear as day going to the door. Mm. Uh, first birthday party mm. of your daughter, and it seems like yesterday. It was, it was yesterday. It was a year ago. <laughs> and my daughter is going to be two in a week. Amazing. And we started off at school. It's kind of early, mm. considering she hasn't even hit two yet. Yeah. But I think she's ready. I think she can do it. So are you doing it mostly for socialization and also a little bit of life balance type of thing? Yeah, all of it. Okay. okay. Kind of a combination of all of it. It's a small Christian private school for, they have two-year-old classes, three-year-old classes, four-year-old classes. I think they go all the way to six or seven years old. Oh, cool. And then after that, you, you got to leave the school. Should be all, should, did, did you cry? <sighs> Dude, when we dropped her off, <laughs> you got to drop off. It's only three hours a day. Three hours? Three long. hours a day, four days a week. And when we dropped her off in the morning, it's like you pull up to the line. They don't let the parents get out of the car. Uh oh because they don't want to deal with, you know, like kids crying yeah, and parents yeah, yeah, having difficulty saying so you just hand goodbye. Them so you open up the car door, they come up to your door, and they just take them. <laughs> Without context, that would sound really bad. <laughs> well, it feels weird. Because we just open I don't up our car that. doors and these randos take our kids. I don't know that specific teacher. Mm -hmm. I don't know the specific person that's taking my kid. And we're sitting in the car, and I'm driving, and my wife's sitting in the back with her because she's freaking out. And this random lady comes up to her car and takes our daughter. And we're like, oh, <laughs> kind of on her back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't take her. And then she, like, turns around. She's holding her. This random lady is holding my daughter. And my wife goes, do you want to come back? You know, because she's hoping. Yeah, my yeah, daughter's yeah. like, no, I don't want to go to school yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah. And then we're like, fine, we're taking her with us. Yeah, yeah. Taking her back. A good excuse, right? A good excuse. Looking for an excuse to not send her to school. And my daughter goes, bye. Oh. And we're like, oh. <laughs> and we'll have that queued up. Emotional damage. Yes, that is part of the emotional damage. And you will continue to give up your daughter to other strangers as life progresses. Dude, it, I'm not ready. It never, uh, it never gets easier. So the question is, she's going to be two in about a week or so. And she's probably the youngest in her school because her birthday is really... Oh, she's on that cutoff? She's on that cutoff. She's born in August. Mm -hmm. So she's uh, really early for her grade. I get it. Yep, yep, yep. And yep. she'll be a little bit too old for the next grade. She's yeah. in that weird area. Yeah, yeah. 
So we decided to start her off in the two year old class, and she's not even two yet. Oh, she's smart. She's she'll. I'm sure she's. Do you think fun. it's too early? No, she's no. two. It's you. It's three hours, mm. right? It's it's good for socialization. I could give you stories on the opposite side of that, where children were born during the COVID lockdown periods, and the grandmother. Um, I won't speak in specifics. So my wife watches this. But <laughs> let's just say the grandmother took over control and completely unsocialized the mm. child by like, oh, we can't go out. We can't go to the park. We can't do all this stuff. And so I've seen the other side of that where their kids aren't socialized and they're complete wrecking balls. Like they have um, stranger anxiety, which your daughter doesn't have because mm -hmm. your daughter's been around. Everywhere. We take her everywhere. I know. Your daughter's she probably met everybody. more. She probably has. She probably has some of the best like defenses from germs because she's been germinated yes. by all of these people, yes. like all these people that you've gone so around. So strong. In. So your daughter's going to be fine. So you're not handing them over to raise your kid. You're handing them over to add to your child's growth. And so that's a good thing. So for the next three weeks, they do a kind of a program where the kids basically just play. Yeah. It's just basically daycare. That's what they should do. But what they do for three weeks is just so they can get a gauge of where your kid is mm -hmm. at and then they can decide how to divvy up the classrooms and then in three weeks, actual, maybe a month, maybe there's a week break routine. I'm not sure. And then actual school starts for like two years. I don't know what they teach a two year old. Probably manners, probably socialization, it's probably basic letters and it should still, get it, them to use their words. It should be one thing creative play. Yeah. That's what it always should be is creative play, using those, using that brain, using that imagination. Because, and I'm, I am absolutely adamant about this. In about third to fourth grade, you see a, powerful switch in most students in third, fourth, fifth grade is that their imagination turns off mm. and they move into, uh, they move into following directions mm. and complying. And so I, this is why, you know, my, my I homeschooled my son, we, we just had to pull them out of that because we didn't want my son at the time to be someone who's just yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. This is the right answer. There's only one, right? There's not one right answer to anything. I mean, you and I are in the game of talking about the social apparatus around mm. us. There's solutions to everything. And so the thing that I'm so, as a father, I'm so just tuned into is ensuring that my kids never lose their imagination hmm. because that's what school will want to beat out of your child. Take away the imagination and fill it in with compliance. Hmm. And the way that you're raising your daughter, I think you'll, you guys will do fine. She's going to be a free thinker. She's going to be an open mind thinker. But most kids, they become they they lose their imagination in third and fourth, fifth grade. You guys are watching. Let me know in the comments. Is two year old too early for school? Some people say that maybe it's too young because I mean she can't speak yet. Mm. She has maybe twenty words mm -hmm. that she uses, which isn't a huge range mm. of vocabulary. So if something were to go wrong in school. She wouldn't be able to communicate with mm. that with us. There is always that risk. And um, you also speak Korean to her. Correct. We so, speak two languages with her. Right. So that, that's going to retard her growth a little bit, just like it did with my daughter, because we only spoke Korean in the beginning with her. But And, and they, they end up accelerating beyond that afterwards. Mm. So it's all fine. Yeah, I mean, we are, all of our neighbors send our their kids to the school. Uh, we signed up for it, I'm going to say last October, last November, maybe. Mm. So we had to get in really early. Mm. And originally, they only allowed us to do, uh, it was waitlisted. We looked one day later, and we found an opening. We signed up for two days, and then we just kept on hitting refresh. And maybe a month <laughs> later, we saw another opening, and we, we clicked it real quickly. It's not easy to get kids into school. No, it's not, especially selective schools. It's very difficult. Yeah, for sure. So we're very fortunate. Um, she is the one Asian kid. There, I just saw a picture of her class. Did I show you the picture? No, yet? you should show it to me. I'll, sh I'll show you the picture. It's okay. It is. You're 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 giving all those other kids diversity. That they, <laughs> that is, uh, apparently, our America's greatest strength is diversity. So Matt is doing doing the good, doing the good work, uh, doing the good liberal work of ensuring that everyone. It's, 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 this is a perfect class. It's, it's, it's I'm, I'm, I'm not going to show. I'm not going to show other people's kids on on stream. But that is a perfect picture of children having fun, being kids, playing, and your daughter is just was wrapped she up the in DEI it. pick? Yes, yeah, she was. <laughs> oh, she, was she, oh my gosh! Speaking of DEI picks, maybe that's a good uh, good transition into what we want to talk about here. Considering DEI picks, I mean, don't we have a a presidential candidate that is the epitome? Of a DEI pick, a DEI hire. Well, rolling into the presidential election cycle of 2024. How Officially, 
We're only a couple months away. I think it's official now. Yeah. And just got to state, it's absolutely crazy that the Democratic Party picked the person saying that the right is going to crush democracy and chose someone that never received one vote. Oh, That is just so wild. And the people on the right are like, this is ridiculous. People on the left, they're not, up, they're not outraged by this. I don't think anybody's really outraged. That's crazy, isn't it? We, There's an entire process. They just went around the entire process. They chose her. They selected her. But she won 99% of the delegates. Don't you think that is a harbinger? Via Zoom vote. It's all backwards. I mean, but, 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 but don't you think, Matt, that this is a harbinger of the fate that we're going to have in the future, which is simply this. People don't care mm. about the process. If they cared about the process, then they would look at this and say, okay, Kamala was selected, not elected. I think everybody with half a brain could say, yes, that's true. She mm. was selected, not elected. But that selection is completely outside the bounds of legality right, mm. and due process. Nobody is upset. Yeah, yeah, you have the political pundits on the right that are arguing about it on Fox, and you have a couple of people on the left, like Chink, uh, Uger, whatever his name is, uh, who talks about it openly. But at the Did end you of the Chink, it, I said Chink. It's, oh. it's Chink, right? <laughs> yeah. It's, or is it Kink? Or is it Cack? I don't know. Is it Cack? I think it's. Cank. I'll call him Cack. <laughs> I think it's Chink. Okay, it's Chink. <laughs> so, like, but Matt, nobody's mad enough to action, and so here's my hypothesis. Nobody's mad enough about the selection that happened. No one's going to be mad enough about the election that's mm. going to happen in November. And regardless of where the election falls, nobody's going to be mad enough to do anything about it, regardless of whether the mainstream media is saying civil war this, civil war that, you know, red versus blue. Then ain't nobody care, Matt. People are exhausted. Don't you think? I hate talking about civil war. Because the more you say it, the more you're almost manifesting it, like you want it to happen. But it's not going to happen. The reality is nobody wants that to happen. Nobody wants it. And if civil war were to ever happen, it would be manufactured by elites, not something that the people actually want or do. Exactly. And it would be probably just held in the the, in the, the mi middle of the cities. Mm. Nobody's going to give a shit about in the suburbs, dude. Mm. You know? So, question. Question about Kamala. Mm. Is she black? Is she Indian? What is she? People are talk about this all the time. I don't understand what she is. Does it matter? Mm. But what is she? From what I understand, there are videos that are circulating of her clearly leaning into her Indian heritage. Mm. You've seen some of these too, uh, which is fascinating to me because I think those it, those videos are prolific enough. And when she was running. A, a, almost a decade ago, there were a lot of news articles talking about her Indian heritage, mm. right? And so I'm curious as, and we all saw the flip, right? When she went to the black vote, uh, I, I think she's just a chameleon. Uh, actually, she's probably a reptilian. Hmm. I was going to do something, but you told me not to do it anymore. So I did it for you. <laughs> <laughs> so she, 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 she changes her leopard spots. I think, mm. I think that's the nature of the beast, but isn't that what politics are all about though? Yeah. Man? All politicians do that. Yeah. Um, because you're white, you're actually white. Hmm. When you want to be, mm. you're black. When you want to be, mm. yep. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. What, yeah. I don't know. That sounded like sounded like white trash, actually. <laughs> yep. Uh, but I mean, you can be whoever you want to be in today's today's uh, day and age. I mean, remember we have boxers who are punt breaking p women's noses that say that they're men in Olympic sports. So we live in this world now where it's completely okay to say that you are whoever you are and who are you, Matt to criticize that Kamala is Indian sometimes, black sometimes, Hispanic sometimes, Jamaican sometimes, and also sometimes an alien. It's okay. How, how does it make you feel when you see her? Because she was in the rally. She had the rally here in Atlanta. Yeah. And she was talking in kind of a more Southern black accent. Yep. And the people on the right are like, oh, look, she's pandering. I feel like when I'm around a lot of country Southern people, I kind of do that too. Yeah, we all do. We all kind of do it. We all kind of, it, it, and it, I think it's a natural human kind of, it's kind of, uh, what is it called, a mnemonic? Mm. It means you naturally, you naturally um, 
for, you know, social psychologists would say, you do this for protection, you do this for safety, for belonging, being part of the larger group, right? It's part of the psychology of taking on a little bit of the culture around you so that you are more accepted. And so this is, this is a natural occurrence. I mean, certainly when I'm with my homies, for example, I went to Florida State. 99% of all my friends at Florida State when I was, was there were, were black. And so let's be honest. I was rocking a lot yeah. of the Afro eight. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I don't know what that That's is. That's racist. <laughs> That's racist. That That's totally racist. Um, no, I mean, I, I used to use language that is a little bit different than the type of language that I'll use on this podcast. Let's put it that way. Because when I'm around Asian, like Asian Asian people, or off, I'm in actual Asia, oh. then I will speak more slowly. I will use certain words. I will remove certain adjectives and vowels and superlatives because it's easier to understand. Yeah. And I've noticed that even my wife. You go to, you go to a Donald English, Trump fifth grade language? Yeah. <laughs> well, my wife is around all American people and she's trying to speak in English. She's, her voice gets a little bit louder Aww. because it feels like if you yeah. speak louder, they can understand you better. Yeah. I don't know why people do that. Well, people they also speak that. slower like it, like it matters too. Like... Are you coming with me <laughs> to the store? It's like you could have just said, "Are you coming with me?" Right? Yeah, and they wouldn't say to the store. They would say, "Are you coming store?" <laughs> right? Exactly. So we we really actually can't blame Kamala for for changing her it's language. It's a little annoying. It it's annoying from a politician because you expect it. Yeah. Right, and that's that's what you you feel like it's pandering for sure. Mm. Now, when Hillary Clinton did it, it's the worst. Oh, it was so crazy. But cringe. she's so unlikable. She, she was she was just like But she Kamala's hang- just as unlikable, no? You, you you remember the clip when she's hanging out with all those uh uh I think black MCs or podcasters and they're like, What do you know? What do you carry in your purse? She's like, I got hot sauce. <laughs> do you remember that, Will? And Biden eating fried chicken everywhere he goes to the every time he goes to a black but, house, but, he's ordering fried chicken. But, but f- that has to be actually one of the most racist things that you can actually do by pandering to that race by cr- cl- selecting the exact stereotypes that would make them chuckle or laugh. I mean, it com- for, and that for- sucks because I love fried chicken. I love watermelon. Actually, it's my favorite thing to eat in the summer. <laughs> oh, so you're actually black, mm. clearly. So yeah, we talk. <laughs> <laughs> We talked about this on last podcast. Uh, apparently, you are uh, culturally appropriating yep. the black man. Yep. Um, now, if you were in the music industry, I that also would... like hot sauce. <laughs> <laughs> if you were in the music industry, that would be a boon. Mm. Remember, in the music industry, the more ghetto and gangster you are, the better. So, mm. for you having hot sauce and chicken wings, we did fine. do an episode with the cowboy hat. We may need to do an episode with grills. I. Can we sit on that? <laughs> I, I, no, well, I actually have a grill. I got it. What? But I do. I can show. I bring it. But I got so much. We're gonna po- fact check that. I got by the so way. much. Po- I got so much positivity from your your from cowboy, cowboy hat, dude. Didn't you get a lot of inbound? <laughs> yeah. Like, dude, that cowboy hat was rocking, yeah, dude. Like, you gotta wear it every day. People love it. I don't know. You, I don't know why you're not wearing it right now, man. You should be wearing it right now. I want to do the grills next. I think it's a thing. You can you can pick them up for like. I f- may $5. even do a white hood one day. They're 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 cheap. They're just. They're, <laughs> I got them. We're gonna put them in here. Oh, actually, you know what? I'll get you. I'll get you. I'll get you some grill. Some nice. Grill, some fake grills. Oh, nice. Nice. They have nice. to be real gold. No, no, no. That, that's then they're expensive. I can get you the cheap ones for five, seven bucks. I no, got you, bro. bro. Bro, come on. Yeah, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna drop. I'm not gonna drop like twelve hundred bucks on a grill. Step it up. Step oh, it up. Step You're up. embarrassing <laughs> us now. <laughs> Guys, okay. Next time you see grills in us, you know it's worth money. That's how it's gonna be. So Kamala, who is the black Indian, um, former descendant of slave owner Jamaican. Yeah, oh yeah, I heard that too. Yeah, absolutely. Apparently everyone's slave owners. Is running for president. And she just did her rally in Atlanta, which I tried to go to. Yeah, what, t- tell, us, tell us about why you were blocked out. What was I have that no idea. About? They didn't I like applied. you? I applied. They I applied like for you. tickets. I tried to get in. I messaged them. Like nothing. You're on the list. Of no nos. That's why. I think they just wanted people that are known associates or people that are within the party or have helped out the party. Those are the people that are invited to this free concert. Mm. And anyone that's not associated with the party, I think it was difficult. I'm not sure. I haven't seen much footage from there either. No. Meaning not a lot of people were able to infiltrate it. Just insiders. All insiders. Yep. So it's very difficult to go to. Um, on Saturday, I did go to the Trump rally. Mm-hmm. And the Trump rally was lit. It was packed. As we can assume. 
thousands of people couldn't even get in. Mm. And do you know what the craziest thing about that rally was? I got there about 1.30. Trump didn't, mm. he was supposed to speak at five. He ended up coming out, coming out around six. Mm. So I was there from 1.30 till about eight o'clock because I was there for the whole event. Georgia State shut off the concessions at 2 p.m. Hmm. That seems like that would not be an economic, a very economical decision since you have all those people that are hungry and they want to eat. There was no food and no water or drinks available mm. to all those people from two o'clock on. That sounds like a setup to make it, un to make it, I mean, the, the f people waited outside probably from the morning and I got lucky. I got special tickets, so I didn't have to stand in the line. It is what it is. But there are people there that waited pretty much all morning mm -hmm. to get in because thousands of people couldn't get in. And it was 95 degrees outside. They're outside. People were like fainting and people were hot. And from what I've heard, there were people kind of like had to sit down and other people in line were like, bring them water, giving them seats, like amazing community outside. Mm. They all took care of each other. But you get, you're standing outside in the heat. You come inside. Finally, I'm going to buy some drinks. I'm trying to find the concession stand so I can buy a water. All closed. That frustrates me because my first thought, Matt, is that's the pettiness. Mm of some of the people who operate these businesses How and crazy. are contracted in. They don't like Trump, they'll take the business, but at the same time, they'll make life harder for Trump supporters. We've seen this time and time again. Whenever I see the footage that nobody's watching, that everybody knows about, of all of the ballots harvesting that happened mm. in the last election and all these people, you know, after hours shoving, like these are the, this is the malfeasance that happens around these political parties. And so I feel like, and of course I could be completely wrong, but I feel like the pattern is recognizable enough where it's like, they're just being assholes, making life harder for the Trump supporters. There was no reason to do that. They should have kept it on, but at the end of the day, it's petty people mm. running these, these these operations. Well, not that only sense? not only did they cut off the concessions, at around three thirty, they close the doors. They don't let more people in, and so people stood outside and they wait. And they have a big screen set up so you can watch the speeches mm. and you can watch Trump speak from outside. Mm. That's typically how these events work, and they have overfill crowd. Right. Right when Trump came out to speak, they shut off the big screen. So all those people sat outside, couldn't get in. Got the doors closed on them. No waited anyway. No food. No food, no water. And they get outside and they're waiting. And as soon as Trump comes on, they shut off the screen. Dude, what, but, 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 What's wrong with Georgia State? Oh, that just, that, uh, that upsets me because it's, you're supposed to put on a good show. Yeah. If you're part of the organize, the court, you know, the organization. It was the Doesn't university's matter. decision to do all this. Well, if it's a university decision, you know that there's a high chance the university leadership is a bunch of liberals who hate Trump. They don't want him there. They don't want to support him there. So they're going to make it as hard as possible for the Trump. But but but, but, but it's he, it's dangerous, is what that is. They don't. You're care. putting people's health at risk. It's crazy that they were willing to do that. Well, just to prove a point, they're willing to do it. But here's the thing, Trump supporters. I think the world knows this by now. Trump supporters will not be deterred. Mm. They're undeterrable. Like a Trump supporter is a Trump supporter through and through. They will sit for hours with no water, no food, just so they can support the man who who they believe is finally giving them a voice into the system. Mm. And so no matter how you starve them, no matter how you, you, you shut them down, no matter how you have them waiting hours, sweaty and almost dying on the, on the, in the hot Georgia sun, and then you don't even give them the pleasure of watching the man on the TV, it's crazy. they will still vote for the man. Yeah. So I, I feel, again, it's just petty people doing petty stuff. That's, what I, that's the way I see it. But we're going to see a lot of political action here oh, in Georgia. It's very obvious at this point. Maybe Kamala's been action. to Georgia five times this year already. Mm-hmm. I think they really think they're going to win Atlanta and they're really going to try hard to win Georgia and win Atlanta. And because of that, Trump's going to have to come back. So we'll see what happens here. But I think Georgia is a really interesting state now because before Kamala, Trump was going to win Georgia. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's, let's talk about this. Can, let me, let me, I'm going to say this out publicly right now. No hesitation. Matt, I'm going to tell you right now, Kamala Harris is going to be the 47th president. Uh, don't say that. Dude, the media apparatus the hasn't media, even started yet it hasn't but it, it hasn't started but they've sh already shown the wicker of the flame they're all saying that kamala is the best shit since sliced bread they all they're all trying to trying to re 
recharacterize her as this amazing savior of the world. And you have all of this, what hundreds of millions of dollars that were locked up for Biden are now being deployed into these events that you're not allowed to go to because it's only for money only and VIPs only. I mean, I, I, I just, I, I feel like, and I, let me put it this way. My gut, if you were to put a gun to my head and say, Peter, you have five seconds, make the decision. The answer is Kamal Harris, period, full stop. She is going to win this election, whether you like it or not. I, I, I just think there's too much happening behind the scenes to make this happen. It cannot be Donald Trump. And I'm going to say it right here, and I hope I'm wrong. During 2020, we found out that mass psychosis by the mainstream media that it works. Oh, absolutely it works. <laughs> this year, it will be mass psychosis, continued confirmation bias. Mm. That's their plan. Mm. To get it in your face so many times, but everyone you follow, everyone you look up to, every influencer, every celebrity, they're going to come out, they're going to say, Kamala, 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 Kamala. And then everyone around you is like, oh yeah, she will. It's always popular. They're deleting all the negative history about her, yes. which is wild. Wild. They're going to say, oh yeah, fact check me. And then you're going to look back like, wait, I can't find it. Mm, here, yeah, never happened. Well, it never happened. It never, never happened, happened, bro. She's not the borders are. She's not the border She's not she, the border She never are. was. She never was. She's not a street walker on, on you know. <laughs> she's not a lady of the night. What are you talking about? Mass psychosis, continued confirmation bias. Those pictures of her being a, a lady of the night, AI. Mm. AI, brother. Never happened. And they are going to convince the population that she is actually popular, that she is actually competent. And can we talk about vice president? Mm, yeah, for sure. What's this guy's name? What's this guy's name that's running for vice president for the Democratic Party? Tim Chosen. Tim Walls. Tim Walls. Yeah. Tim Walls. I, I've been kind of, all day, I have been just doom scrolling Tim Walls content. What did you find? I think he's a really good pick for them. Why? He Tell is. me. He's really likable. What? Yeah. He's really like. Can I give you three things that immediately that when I started, when I heard that he mm. was the pick that that my matrix fed to me, the first thing it fed to me was number one, he lied about his military engagement. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, we have seen uh, pictures of him with a DUI, and from everything and lying, I read, lying to police about it. He got his DUI going ninety eight and his thirty five or like, sixty five or whatever something yeah. crazy. And blew a really big number, something crazy. Said he was blind and deaf or something. And he's been sober ever since. Okay, fair enough. So okay. it's like, all right, so that's actually... Cares. Yeah. How about... Actually, that's not a great story to tell. Not a great story to tell. That's actually how, a how, not good narrative put out there because they're like, well, I've been sober ever since. Like, oh, damn. Like, okay, that's a really good thing to so, do. So uh, the third thing I saw was um, the the uh, his city mm. uh, during the Summer of Love, mm. Black Lives Matter, um, his city... Uh, incurred some of the highest amounts of uh, uh, building buildings being burnt down. Yep. You know, public uh, public uh, arrests, uh, uh, public damage in the hundreds of millions. Uh, so that's not a good thing. Uh, and then the fourth thing, if I now remember, is that he now in his in his Minneapolis, he has now imported hundreds of thousands of Somalians. Mm. So now he's created a new Somalian uh, community there. That is growing and now pushing uh, Islamic and Muslim uh, values into that city. So mm. I, I think the locals are probably the most upset about that. So those are the four things that I read early this morning when I heard that the pick was taken. And I felt like those were probably not too positive in light of Tim Walz. Okay. If you see on, if you see it from the side of a Democrat, mm -hmm. of a liberal, he has won a Trump county before. Okay which is for them positive because he's shown he can flip. Okay. Um, he, there's a lot of footage of him hanging out with his daughter, mm -hmm. like really wholesome stuff all over the place. Okay. Uh, okay. So he's I like, mean, Biden, when he hangs out with his daughter, it's wholesome too. Yeah. Not like shower with your daughter, wholesome, more like. <laughs> oh, I thought that was considered wholesome because that's <laughs> more, now, but now more that's like now. Go on like roller coasters and spend the day together type of wholesome. Oh, that's not normal. Yeah, unnormal, that's, not normal. Yeah, that's like that's right unnatural. But yeah, there's a lot of that out there, and uh, he actually speaks really well. He's kind of a cuck, though. Yeah, I mean, but like if you're a Democrat and you're used to cucks and oh. you want a cuck, he actually speaks to you. 
no balls. Because we we've talked about it early on. We talked about it last week. Is that the goal of politics is not to convince people to join your side, is to incentivize and motivate your side to come out and vote more than the other side. Okay. Did you see Donald Trump recently on that streamers? Yes. Did Aiden you Ross. I didn't even know who this guy was. Huge. I didn't. I didn't Huge know who streamer. he was. Um, I watched the part where Donald Trump said that JD Vance actually doesn't help him. Did mm. you watch that part? Mm-hmm. He, they were talking about JD Vance, and, and Donald Trump comes out just plain as day. He's like, "Well, JD Vance is actually not going to help me that much on the ticket because he's not. I'm Donald Trump, and mm. I am who I am." And so I found that to be an interesting concession from Donald Trump on live stream to say, "Hey, you know, I picked this JD Vance, but he's not actually going to help me move it." You're, I feel like Kamala's VP pick really here, helps her. You're saying it really helps her. I think it really helps her. But in most her. cases, it might not. So I guess that's where my, my question was. You you feel like this is actually going to advance Kamala's uh, eligibility for for being president? Well, okay. Why? She, because he's a, because he's a white beta male. Yeah, it helps fill out the. There's going to be a huge segment of Democrats that are like, well. I don't know if we want to vote for the black Indian Jamaican priestess girl, right? There's a lot of people that are thinking that. Like, we don't want her to be in charge. And then you get bringing a guy in that has a lot of experience, that actually checks a lot of boxes. And so, did like former teacher, former educator, former military, former everything. You think he's going to help? I think he helps a lot. Have you seen the. And I think you're going to, you're going to have the contrast between him and JD. And then JD is going to seem young and unexperienced versus the more experienced guy. Did you see the white guys for Biden mm. Zoom? Do you see? Did, there, was there, that cringe? Was that cringe AF? Yeah, but was that this guy's AF? like their hero? Do, do you know what I'm saying? <sighs> like they could have went Pete Buttigieg, Pete yeah. Buttigieg, 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 Booty Juice, Booty Juice. They yeah. could have went P- Pete Buttigieg, and. That would have been weird because, like, oh, of course you picked the gay guy. It's so obvious. You were you were going for the other white white dude, and Na- they could have. Yeah, I thought it'd be Gavin. I was wrong. I can be wrong. Mm. Um, people thought it'd be Josh Shapiro from Pennsylvania. I heard that too. Yeah, didn't end up being him because she didn't want to uh, seem too Jewish Israel friendly, <laughs> right? Okay. So, I'm wondering how the squad's gonna take to this. I mean, they the got AOC, it. you know, the squad, um, uh, whatever, the Talib, whatever, because they're very anti-Israel. Yes, and she chose the not, the, the non-Israel candidate. So actually, it's, they gotta be pretty happy about this. They could have went you with think Shapiro. So? Yeah, hmm. but she didn't. The I obvious just, choice would have been to take I guess Josh I'm just, Shapiro. I'm just, I guess I'm just fighting patterns, man. Yeah. The patterns I'm fighting is I just I don't see this guy being a boon, a benefit. Or maybe even a negative. I just see him as some like, like Pee Wee Herman mm. that's been slotted in, and they're like, yeah, he kind of, he seems like a DEI hire. He's, Doesn't he seem like a DEI? It's it's odd, but it's like he's actually a DEI hire. I think if you took politics out of it, and you took his stance on certain social and moral issues out mm. of it, I think you would like him. Do we even know what his stance is? Actually, if we could back up one even one step even more, do we even know what Kamala stands for? No. Because she has not done anything that has been off script, really. And every time she does stuff off script, it's horrible. It's almost like, when is the media going to come? But right? as we get into campaign season, they're going to control what she says. They're going to control the environment in which she says it. And you mean just like Biden? And she's so going to well, end up with four more years of controlled Biden, who who never spoke really off script ever. Yeah, who's controlled and handled the. Which, by the way, which they're okay with. Which they, by the they're way, they're fine with that. Well, don't we have a country to run still? Where where's Biden? What is he doing? Uh, apparently, he's trying to stop World War Three. Allegedly. Oh, is that right? Allegedly, is World War, is World War Three upon us? Something about Iran bombing Israel, and Israel and Iran are adamant about starting World War Three. <sighs> I've heard such things, but you know the Bible says and there's rumors of wars. Probably they're gonna they're gonna start bombing each other, and then Biden and Kamala will come out and save the day. And they're like, "Do you guys really want to replace and change what's going on?" That's probably what they're doing, to be mm-hmm. honest, mm-hmm. right? Because they have to build narrative, they have to give her credibility, they have to make sure that they have some sort of positive momentum moving forward. They'll for, you'll forget about the four years of craziness, and like they stopped World War Three. And she is for diversity. 
She wants to lower drug cost, and they want to make sure that everyone has free child education. And people are like, yeah, that sounds great. And actually, it does sound great. It does sound great, yeah. And they'll tell you exactly what you want to hear. So and you have to steal man for me because you you had a visceral hmm. visceral reaction to when I said I truly believe in my heart of hearts that Kamala is going to be president. You were like, ah. Oh. So steel man for me then, Matt. Why is Trump going to win? Well, Trump, if Trump were to win, it would be because so many people that are so disenfranchised by the system are like, enough is enough. They keep on prosecuting people. They're going after people. We see what's going on in UK where the police are showing up at your house and saying, oh, yeah, you said something really bad on Facebook. <sighs> Did I, you see that clip? I, How crazy is that? I can't believe. I mean, we 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 already saw forced vaccinations in like Australia, so like it wasn't that shocking. But at the same time, it's but, like, bro, uh, can, can, Matt, take take a second. Can you imagine your, yourself going up to a person and saying to them, "I saw that you wrote this thing on Facebook, mm. you faggot." Yeah, like you actually like the fact that you're gonna get in a fight with someone about something they wrote on Facebook. And have the authority behind you with a badge and a gun to be able to say, we saw you wrote this on Facebook and we're going to arrest you. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I would look at them and I'd say, did you just use the word Facebook? Well, did, is, is that I wrote something on Facebook. Like how that what a stupid name. Facebook. Like <laughs> Facebook is the stupidest name. You're gonna get mad. You're gonna arrest me because I wrote something on a a platform, a technology platform called Facebook. Well, you faggot. The That's movie so stupid. told us that it was the Facebook, and then they just dropped the Facebook. I just the, and now it's just Facebook. By the a, way, that, I mean it, it's such, such a stupid name within the in the context of this of this this happening. That I mean you could ch ch you could have chosen a better name. You could have said I don't like what you wrote on Pinterest. Then it, <laughs> then you would have been then you would have totally <laughs> sounded gay. Right? I mean it's just like I watch these things and, I, and it's so hard to fathom that this is actually happening hmm. to people. That you wrote something on a website called Facebook and it offended somebody, and so now they're going to put you in jail. Yeah. They Face totally showed up at this book. guy's house. It's on video. We've all seen it where they show up and they say, hey, we have to arrest you because you violated the rule. And this law, actually, I looked it up. It's from like 2003. So it's an old law that they're reviving. I would just look at them and say, you just you just use the word Facebook with me. <laughs> Don't you find that to be not beyond ironic? It's moronic that you're actually here on behalf of a company and a law tied to the a company of a platform where I wrote something. You know, you, I, you, you, you might as well go out for so, saying something like really heinous. But the reality is that this election is becoming a election between the nationalists, mm -hmm. people who want America to remain America, people who want American culture and society actually to mean something, mm -hmm. versus globalists. Mm -hmm. People that don't want to have countries and borders and want everyone to be on the same page and want everyone to be equal and want to be able to merge everything internationally. And there are a lot of people on that side. Mm -hmm. People actually don't, there are a lot of people that actually don't mind that idea because this guy, uh, Tim Walsh, he's done a lot of stuff in China. He's been to China several times. Mm -hmm. He does, he's taught in China. He's there all the time. And I'm thinking about it, and people are like, oh, yeah, look how many times he's been in China. I'm like, dude, wait a second. I've been to China a lot, too. There's actually a video of Tim, <laughs> yeah. there's actually a video of Tim Walsh. Um, in the video, he's sitting in front of the American flag and the Minnesotan flag. Mm. Did you see that video? Yep. He replaces it with a Somalian flag. Well, it's no. They changed the flag logo to look Somalian, but it's not a Somalian flag. It's their new state flag. It, they just redesigned it. I know. But it looked fine. <laughs> it looked fine. It looked classical. Like, yeah, like but that's classy. the same argument as like baseball teams changing the logo. Like we really like the old baseball no. logo. And like, no, this is a new one. It's cleaner. No. You know, or no, the no, Washington no. Redskins becoming the Washington football team to becoming whatever the hell they are now. You know? No, this is this this Matt. You go from this this ornate symbol. We had with, Chief Wahoo for the Cleveland Indians. I'm from Cleveland. We had Chief Wahoo and it was the Indian. They should have kept it that way. And now it's just like Indians. That's you're you're it's, losing history. 
I get you're, it. You're going to go from this ornate emblem and symbol to this ugly pastel four colored flag. I get it. And people That's like taking the Sistine Chapel and saying, "Let's let's demolish the Sistine Chapel and let's let's make a one big thick dick looking <laughs> building, you know, here that just has gl- windows." I mean, come on, you're going from classic architecture to absolute bland progressive like communism architecture style. That's and what I they am, did with the Minnesota flag. I am 100% on your side. I think things that are classic should be left classic. Yeah, leave them alone. However. Leave it alone. However, history and recent history has proven that when they make these radical changes, people are pissed off for maybe a month. That's what I'm saying. And they're like, oh, it's okay. That's what I'm saying. That's fine. Nobody- I'm still going to go root for Cleveland, you know, Native American <laughs> Right? I'm still going to go root for the Washington football team because mm. that's like the worst name ever. I think they're commanders now or commandos now or whatever it is. But they're not the Washington Redskins any longer. <sighs> Lord Lord knows. It's so it's so it's so important in the game of football to not offend people. Dude, you're smashing people's heads in. And the Atlanta Braves used to do the oh, 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 oh. and those were good times. And they don't do it anymore. And they still do it anyway, but they're officially not supposed to do it. They still do it. But do you know what? Stadium is packed. People don't care. Oh, it's, oh, you're saying it's kind of like the Olympics where everyone was all up in arms about the highest ratings ever. Highest, highest ratings, highest viewers ever. 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 After that satanic debacle nobody of cares. opening ceremony, everyone said they're going to protest that shit. Nobody fucking cared. Like I said, highest ratings ever for Olympics. Like I said on our last episode, man, it's all the it's going to literally require box cars. Okay, and then we say, well, uh, Tim Walsh was in charge and he was there and he let Min- Minneapolis burn because of BLM and George Floyd. Mm. Nobody fucking cares. So what's the call to action here? Then? He's the white guy that speaks well, that shows up. That looks like he has strong family values. He made lunch, school lunch free for all the kids. Those are really good talking points. Mm. Politics is not about policy as much as they tell you it is. It's about likability. You're right. It's never about actual policy. It's who's more likable and who are who is likable enough where you incentivize and motivate your side to come out and vote for your candidate. So what, they have a really strong. What candidate. do you think is going to be the next cringeworthy moment and event that's going to happen with Kamala? Because you know it's coming. Mm. So are she going to be on like the BET Awards? Yes. Or is she going to be on the MTV? Yes. She, Nickelodeon. Yes. She will be everywhere, and every single channel would promote her. I actually saw that Gavin Newsom started a podcast. Did you see that? What? Gavin Newsom has his own podcast. It's what is on the radio ta- as well. What is he and talking about? His co-host is Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch? Yep. I like that guy. Now you don't. Him and Gavin <laughs> Newsom. <laughs> <laughs> now you don't. They have their own show now. Marshawn Lynch is such a gangster. Not anymore. He's a cuck. That's why he's always talking about them Skittles. Mmm. Should have seen it then. Should have seen it then. Dude. This guy literally built his brand on Taste the Rainbow. <sighs> Didn't see it. Ha, huh, gotcha. Maybe he got diddied. Mm. Mm. You know, some of the toughest guys in my history, like Tupac, are actually gay. Mm. Mm. Yep. I remember when you were really sad about that. I was so sad about it. I posted it on I posted it on my YouTube and I got like over 10,000 views. <laughs> it's like one of my best ones in a long time. I'm Dude, Marshawn Lynch, do you have you watched the clips of him saying, uh, of him doing the interviews mm. back in the day, mm. where he was like, "I'm just here so I don't get fined." Do you yep. remember that? Like, yep. I, I loved and respected him for that because he's just like, "Well, if I don't do this interview, I'm going to be charged fifty grand." So you know what? I'm not taking any questions. I'm just here so I don't get fined. And that's all he did. I was like, "Dude, you're the man. You're the man." But you. But then I also saw. Now I remember the Skittles. Yep. Now I remember him licking his lips. Yep. Why do I remember that? Because he is now has his own show with Gavin. I Nissen. can't believe this. Are you? Uh, did you look this up, Will? And Marshawn Lynch's agent or whoever is Gavin Newsom's like really good friend. So it's actually the three of them. It's Marshawn Lynch, Marshawn Lynch's agent or friend or whoever, and get, who's Gavin Newsom's friend. So the three of them now have their own show, podcast, radio shows. Could be syndicated. 
It's going to be everywhere. Oh. Everyone's going to listen to it. Everyone's going to hear it. And you're going to find the, probably the best Democratic talking head in the country yeah. with Marshawn Lynch, who a lot of the community support, appreciate, even football fans that are not in the urban community yeah. like Marshawn Lynch. And they're like, oh, look, but Marshawn Lynch supports them. I almost feel they like are, they're really good. Dude. I feel like Gavin Newsom is culturally appropriating mm. using Marshawn Lynch as a mech. I mean, like, Marshawn Lynch isn't the greatest communicator. I mean, he's he's at a level where it's like you can understand him, but he's he's not an eloquent man. That's why you're bringing in Gavin. I should, I cannot believe this this juxtaposition of a Gavin Newsom who is literally a a, a, a human waste and slime inside of a suit, mm. and you have Marshawn Lynch who's made millions of dollars being one of the biggest freight trains in football history, and he gives a lot back to his community, mm. which I was always respectful of. I just, it's a really good I, pick. I don't understand this match, dude. I just don't get it. What's the name of the show, Will? P- d- getting diddied? Is that what it's called? Politicking. Politicking. Yo, bro, we are politicking tonight with Gavin Newsom oh and Marshawn Lynch. Oh politicking. Whoa, politicking. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. yeah. They had to go with the ghetto politicking. Politicking. Oh. Politicking. It's not pandering at all. This Not all. Matt's version. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know where that's coming from, bro. I yep. feel like that could be like a Filipino dude. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh man. Oh, I'm sorry to hear this. So we are we are you know what's so crazy is it's August and it's September, October, November. We literally have two months. Yes. Of this twenty four seven. And this is just the beginning. I feel like it's just the beginning. It is just the beginning. We're just ramping up. We, Does we it feel like out, it's too we late? Just, we just found out who the ticket is now. Usually, I mean, usually it, we, we know it months in advance. This seems like it's a little too little too late, man. It's all about timing. Mm-hmm. Whoever controls a narrative at the moment of election wins the election. Can we also talk about, can we also, I want your thoughts on the memory holding mm. of Donald Trump getting shot in the fucking head. Dude, that was only three weeks ago. It's been memory hold. Nobody even talks about it anymore. It's gone. We don't even know what happened. How I, crazy is that? I, that was where I was gonna go. We have no idea. We have no conclusion. How do we not? Ha- how is this not on the front page of the news every, every day. single day? The wild former president running for president got shot in the head, mm. and nobody's talking about it. Nobody. Nobody's well, talking about actually, it. Actually. There is one group talking about it. This, yeah, I said that one ex guy who's just no. like, TMZ is dropping a documentary no. about the shooting. <laughs> TMZ is completely liberal. I'm, I haven't seen the documentary yet. I don't think it's available to see yet. It's going to be coming out any day now. Curious to see what it is. And I'm sure a lot of people are like, oh, we're going to go watch this. Like, damn it, TMZ. Such a smart move oh, yeah. on their part because they to get make to a documentary s- on they this. They get to set the record and say that he was shot by a piece of glass. I mean, they're going to do a, apparently from the clip and the promo reel that they they made and they put out there, they're going to talk about um, the how the Secret Service failed, what was wrong that day, all the um, eye accounts of people that were there actually called out and said, hey, there's a guy on the roof, there's a guy on the roof. They have, they're talking to those people and they're doing a profile on the shooter. You mean the shooter that actually wasn't the shooter? Exactly. It's all wrong. Everything's wrong. And they are taking whatever that narrative is. They're rewriting history. And they are putting that as the historical record. They're setting the record straight. Nothing to see here. There's nothing else to find out because we found the truth. And the reality is, is that this crazy guy took a shot, missed. People knew about it. They failed. And that's the whole story. Even though the guy on the guy that was kill, supposedly killed doesn't even look like the guy. Nothing to see here. We are TMZ. And, and we, we speak ha- the and, truth. And there are there is video and pictorial proof of uh, gun flashes, muzzle flashes in the window under where he was. And there is proof that there was someone shooting from 500 yards away, which would only equate to exactly where the water tower is. They are setting the actual narrative of the country. There are three shooters. Well, actually, there were two shooters, and one was a patsy who got his head blown off because he didn't actually do anything. And I don't know. I haven't seen the. I haven't seen the documentary, so I have no idea what they're gonna say. It'd be interesting if they were like, "Huh, we need to do." Maybe there's more shooters. It'd be really cool. You know, what we need that. to do. L- watch it live on we Discord. Need to do a watch party. Awesome. Discord. We're gonna do a live we- watch party of this documentary, and we can 
pick out all the discrepancies and, and, and live I'm just gonna, as we watch I'm going to call it out. We should do it immediately as fast as possible once it comes out so that we can be the first people to review it in full. Hmm. Full review of the TMZ document. There are going to be a lot of people watching oh, it. Oh, yeah. And it's only available, I think, on Tubi. What's that? It's another streaming service. There's a million streaming services. It's like only P available it's on... It's like Peacock? It's like Peacock. It's like the Ghetto Netflix. It's like the Ghetto... Ghetto. I don't know what, what, what are the other ones. But it's only available on Tubi. I've never heard of Tubi. So Tubi. Tubi. there's going to be a lot of people. Tubi. They're going to get a lot of signups. It is genius that they made this. Why a right-wing media outlet hasn't beat them to the punch i have no idea always behind the ball I, it's so frustrating that we have a side that's supposed to represent our social cultural our values our family values we, and for some reason they are always behind what the left is doing we allow the left to create in history it's so frustrating because the left is better technology <laughs> They understand it more. And the reality is, is that I've spoken to a lot of people in tech recently that are wildly conservative, actually. Even software engineers, uh, programmers, engineers, w whatever. Yep. But they they don't want to get fired. They just go along yeah. with the narrative and they're pushed these crazy ideas and they just blindly comply. Of course. Because their jobs are very important to them. And I get it. It's your yeah. job. You, you cannot go against the vision and the goals of the uh, the executives. And the left runs technology, and they keep on winning the social media war, yes. this battle. The right and MAGA and Trump, we've been at this all year. Mm. They show up one week ago, and it's like neck and neck. I mean, you almost— What the hell have we been doing for the last six months? You almost feel like we that we could like multiply it, you know, the Dilly Show, because mm. he's he's creating all these memes, yep. all this content, like the war will be fought with memes type of deal, right? But like he and there's there's others too, but he's the first that comes to mind. He was actually creating narrative content to go against yes. the mainstream. I love what he's doing. Narrative, yeah. Oh, absolutely. His personality for some, maybe not the guy. But, he's a soldier in the war. He's doing the best he can. And he is completely mission focused. His mission is I'm gonna get help President Trump get elected at all costs. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. I think that's necessary and needed. Who else is doing that? Everyone else just sits around resharing and stealing other people's content. You just said it though. They don't do shit. You just said it. The liberals own technology. The liberals are far better at leveraging that technology. And we conservatives allow the liberals to write history. Yes. We just l let them do it. There's a thousand, for those out there who think that this might be untrue, there are more than a thousand, trust me, probably even more, ex examples that you know of where we allowed the liberals to write that history. Yes. It didn't actually happen that way. It just happened that way because that's what we allowed the liberals to write, and that's why we write it about the way we do in our history books. It's complete nonsense. But it seems it's almost like conservatives don't care enough about being right, mm. you know, because the liberals are never right, but they can cr they can rewrite history so that they're always right. They understand the game. They do. They play the game far better, and our tolerance has made us weak. And the right, we have this. We have a history of, number one, celebrating way too early, mm -hmm. letting off way too early, mm -hmm. and I really don't like and making changes at the last minute when the strategy that you had been using was working. It's too emotional at that point. There's not enough, there's not enough thoughtfulness. And the happens. people on the right don't like to hear this shit. They don't. They're like, don't talk negatively, like Trump's going to win and he's winning, can't you see? And all they do is look at X. Trust the plan. And like, oh, yeah, everything on X is all pro-Trump, so it means we're going to win. And I'm like, no. Dude, no. There's such a small population of the country that goes on X. Actually, if I went on the street and asked 50 people, 100 people. X is not real. How much time do you spend on X? 99% of them will say, dude, I don't even have an account. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And maybe they do have an account. They just yeah. don't even check in or log yeah. in. But we think that X decides the narrative of the country. And the reality is, Adam, it's just not true. 
Yeah, well, the rea- I, I forget this. I forget the statistics, so somebody can spot check me on this. But I, the, out of out of a country of 350 million people in America, I believe the the thing that I, I read, and this was years ago, is that actually only about 12 million have an account on X, and out of those 12 million, like only like 200,000 actually are that most active on X. And so when you look at X as your news source for what's going on in the country, the answer is wrong, sir. Uh, X is not what's actually happening. It, it's a subset group of a subset subset group of a very subset group of people who will love to shout about what's going on. I, I think I looked at the recent numbers and I think it's something like 14 million active users on a daily basis. 12, on, 14, yeah, about yeah, the same. 14 million or something like that uh, in the United States. 14 million yeah. active daily users. A fraction. A fraction. Instagram has something like 35 or 40 mm-hmm. million daily active users. TikTok has more than that. Mm-hmm. And YouTube has like a 50 or 60 million. Mm-hmm. So... The left has a hundred something million and they have 65% of X. <laughs> Fair. Yeah, I, I see where you're going. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. It's such a small segment. It's, it's such a small segment of a cross section of a segment. And so like if you're getting most of your news from social media platforms, you are deeply misinformed. Yes. Deeply misinformed. You're informed a little bit, but in terms of the, the bias, in terms of the narrative, in terms of the messaging, you're deeply misinformed. I For was sure. talking to our neighbor, Lavilla, yesterday, and she has like modeling agencies, so she has a lot of models. And I asked her, and she's a big Trump person. And I said, what do the girls think? Ooh, because she was with a bunch of them over the weekend. All right. And, you know, like you're talking about 20 to 30-year-old like women, mm. right? Pretty women. Haven't hit the wall yet. No. And I was like, what do they think? And they're like, she's like, they don't care. At all. They have no interest. Actually, they're so disenfranchised both by politics altogether. They actually don't like Trump. They don't like Biden. They definitely don't like Kamala. They just want to get paid. They just wor- worry about their own lives. Mm-hmm. And the reality is that when push comes to shove, later on, I mean, Beyonce endorsed Kamala. They'll probably just roll with her. They don't care. And that's if they vote. If they vote. So, like I said, it's going to require the boxcars, man. Mm-hmm. Because we are now living in a moment, and I was telling you off camera this, I have, a, I have a, a, a network friend, not super close, but he hits me up and he's been telling me about the nightmare. He lives in London. So he's been telling me about the nightmare of these clashes mm. between the immigrants in the UK and the native born. And he was telling me that it's what you're seeing online, which is still censored, is not even close mm. to the amount of clashes, fights, you know, gangs roaming the streets late at night. And I, I feel like, again, this is one guy. So, you know, take everything I say with a grain of salt. But I feel like this is the boxcar moment for the UK. Mm. It's like the boxcars are here, right? They've been here for a long time. You just ignored them. But the boxcars are here. And the question is, are you going to load yourself into the boxcars willingly? Or are you going to fight the boxcars? Which is what's happening right now is they're fighting the boxcars, they're fighting the immigration. They're fighting the people that are like, whoa, why, why is 78% of London Muslim? Mm. Like, that, that's, that's a new idea. 78% of that city is a person of color. Like, and- what happened? So the boxcars are there in the UK. And I'm wondering if, if America is ever going to get to the point where the boxcars are going to be in front of your house. You're going to say, you know what? Maybe it's a little too little too late for me to pick up my axe, you know? Well, I th- and I, I told you, a part of me says we should just let UK burn. I didn't, I, I, you saw my reaction. I didn't like that response. I, I didn't like it at all. But you need to see what happens when all these crazy liberal policies actually take charge. They actually go into effect. You need to see what actually happens. Mm-hmm. And if we save them and if they come out of this, people are like, oh, actually it wasn't that bad. <laughs> It doesn't bad. prove a point. We, Actually, we were just, no we were just taken happened. over without a fight. Yeah, because it'll go back to normal mm-hmm. and it'll be kind of dangerous because UK is always kind of dangerous. London's always dangerous. And I don't want to see people get hurt. I don't want to see the place fall. But if you have to save our country here in the United States, mm-hmm. sometimes you have to see what the actual future looks like. Mm-hmm. And maybe it takes something that extreme for it to happen. To I- say, okay, you take, you let all the immigrants in, you remove the rule of law. You start going pe- after people for censorship. You start putting in crazy liberals to run your government. Draconian policies. And then what happens? 
people in the United States would be like, huh, maybe that's just not that good of an idea. So I, I, I already know that there are thousands upon thousands of your followers, subscribers, and people who love you, Matt, who are probably vehemently disagreeing with mm. you at this moment. Uh, I think I'm, I'm probably in that camp, uh, probably not vehemently dis uh, opposed to what you're saying. I just I, I feel like that is an awful lot of suffering that could potentially be quelled uh I'm just, I'm just not. I'm just. I'm just not into suffering, dude. If we well, can, if, if we you, if we can get if we can find a resolution without suffering, I think that would be far superior. Obviously, if we quell, if we stop the civil war that's brewing mm. in the UK, and because of that, as a result, we see destruct complete destruction of society here, we actually didn't help anybody. Mm. Yeah, I think we're in a place where we have to actually protect ourselves. I think society here is getting so bad. And if the United States can figure it out and get out of this thing, then actually other countries will follow. Instead of trying to solve other people's countries, other countries' problems first, and then solve our own, solve it here, and then let that roll out the other way. Mm. I think the idea of saving them first is like, dude, we have to save here. Peace, fair enough. I, you, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, I am America first. Yeah. Like, fuck the rest of the world. Like, y'all, you can do your thing. I think my call is UK parliament, UK politicians, UK, you know, people over the, that live over there. It's it's time for action. Mm. It's t it, The boxcars are here. Yes. They're here. They are literally at your front front door. Three girls were stabbed to death. Like, mm. like this should never happen. No. You just submitted your child to a daycare, bro. Like the uh, last I'm gonna go pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> gonna go pick her up right now from that crazy. From Daddy's that, coming. Uh, from that crazy stabber. <laughs> the, the the stabber guy. I mean, like because we can't certainly call out his race because that no. would be you know, no, 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 it would no, it, it no, would no, be no. a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know my feel. I like can't understand my feelings whenever I hear Matt say yeah. I'm like I don't know what to do with this feeling but right here. The, the the reality is this. If you see what's going on in the world, you see what's going on in UK, you see what's going on in Australia, you see what's going on in Bangladesh, you see what's going on in Venezuela, you see what's going on in Brazil, they are coming. Mm. They are 100% coming for your rights, for your freedoms, for your way of life. It is for a fact that they are on their way. Mm. And Kamala and this new guy, Tim Walls, they are just the puppets for their way to come in and take yours here in this country. Mm. If you don't want that to happen, the only thing you can do is join the, the Matt Kim podcast <laughs> uh, and the Discord below and, and go to the swag stores to so support to freedom in America. The only thing you can actually do is you have to go vote. Mm. And I'm going to make the vote and call out. You have to go vote. And it's not enough that you vote. You have to take a friend to vote. Mm. Go find one friend, two friends, three friends, four friends. Because I'm telling you, the left, they will show up in numbers. They will show up big this time. I believe it 100%. They have so much celebrity power and they don't, the celebrities that were on the fence and sitting on the bench because they didn't want to go to bat for Joe Biden because it was embarrassing to be a part of Joe Biden. They are re-energized. They are willing to take their money mm. in order to promote Kamala. They say, oh, they're getting paid. They were getting offered to get paid for Biden. They were saying no to that. C celebrities and influencers were actively saying no you can't pay me enough money to support Biden. Now they're saying, yes, we'll take your money and we'll support Kamala. Mm. They say, oh, they're paid. It doesn't matter if they're paid. They're out there. Mm. So what would you say to the Julian Assange's of the world, the Glenn Greenwald's of the world, the Whitney Webb's of the world who would look at you to your face and say, voting is not the solution. Mm. You're not going to vote your way out of tyranny is what I know Whitney Webb has said. Um, what would you say to a, a Julian Assange, Whitney Webb, who said, bro, like voting is not the solution. It's actually direct action. It may not be the solution, but you still have to do it. Mm. Because if you don't, you are literally giving the other side exactly everything they want. Because they, you're not wrong. They will show up in droves. They will show up. Yeah. So you have to prevent that. Even if your vote doesn't matter, you have to at least try at this point. Because they are actively coming for your way of life. So then what happens when, when, when the man who just wanted to be left alone. Mm. You've heard that quote before, right? Yes. So what do you do with a man who just wanted to be left alone and he finally got up enough assertiveness and gumption to go vote and then his vote ended up not mattering and he ended up with a Kamala president anyway? 
What is that man who just wanted to be left alone to do then? Don't be a fucking coward. Go vote. But after you vote and it doesn't fare in the way that you'd like and the, the society and the, the town you live in and the culture around you is continuing to be invaded and becoming worse and worse and worse, what is the man who just wanted to be left alone to do then? At least you tried. Is, that was it. That's that's the recompense. That's, that's it. The, that's reconciliation. Or, that, or you could just roll over and take it in the ass. That's it. You have we have. You can either try and fight back. You can actually try to make your voice matter, or you can just take it. So you're, but you you would say then the man who just wanted to be left alone. It's now time for him to jump into action. Get off your ass and try and do something. Do something. As Mahatma Gandhi would say, right? Be the change that you want to see in the world. Is what he said, right? That's mm -hmm. the Mahatma Gandhi way. So are you saying that we need to be assertive individuals of this country and we need to be that which we want everybody else to be? We need to be men and women of action? Be men and women of action. Mm. I could dig that. See you guys next week. Thank you, everybody. Join Matt Kim Podcast. I like that. It's good. That was good. Thank you.